we have all we need. Now, we know the scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this he has given us his very great and precious promises. So that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Let us pray. Father, it is always, Lord, our desire to know you more, to know what you have for each one of us. We know, Lord, you don't, you don't give it all to us at once because you want us to depend on you every moment of every day. So, Father, let this scripture remind us, teach us what you have already prepared for us and have given us to make a life, Lord God, more pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, look at these four things. Inisya kabalunata, okay? Now, he has shown us mercy, he has shown us grace, he has secured our salvation, and he has showered us with his unconditional love. He has given us all this, and we know it. But let us look at the scripture again, because there's still more he wants us to know in this passage of scripture. Okay? Now, first, the provisions we have received. In verse 3, it says that the Lord has given us everything we need for life and godliness. As a Christian, we have received countless blessings from God. If we have believed and trusted the Lord, all these are true. But sometimes we you know, we fail to realize how blessed we are. We thought, you know, we're still running for things. Even we know that we have it or we don't have it, but today the scripture tells us we have it. God has already given us. We don't just realize how blessed we are. If you compare your former life to your life now, oh my. You can't even see your former life because it is all covered with the blessings of God that changes this that, that he has made in your life, isn't it? Somehow your former life, you know, it is being transformed little by little until it is nothing. Because God wants you to see only the life that he has given you. A new life after Christ. We have to realize we are blessed. We are so much blessed. And sometimes we don't realize it because now the only way that we will, if we will spend time with the word of God, we will constantly be reminded of his great provisions. To be reminded, Peter said, I am not giving you a new thing, or I am not writing to you a new thing, but as long as I live, I will continue to remind you of the word of God. It is always, it is good always to be reminded that you are blessed. You know, when we come on Sundays like this, here, you will be reminded. But let us not be reminded only on a Sunday service. If we live in the presence of God, read the Bible, we will always be reminded. Oh, God has changed me. He has blessed me. Why, you know, 
why still I submerge myself in the trials and challenges of life when I know that I know that God has given more and more to cover all those things, to have a heart and mind that is after Christ, renewing everything in me. Now, so the promises we have received is the promises or the provisions we have received. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And it says the source of this provision is the power of God, which means God is the source of every blessing that we receive. When you become a believer, everything that comes to your life comes from God. Even the trials that He allows comes from God. All the good things that you receive come, comes from God. Now, let me remind you, when you become a believer and you surrender your life to Jesus and say, Lord, I am yours, never again claim anything. It is all for the glory of God. Never claim anything. Oh, kung hindi sa akong buhay, kung nabudlay, hindi ko magamunin. No, never claim, because everything comes from God. Okay? Through His power, He can do anything. He can give you anything that you need. Now, what the, the reality also that is God does not give us everything we ask because He knows what is best for us. He can see far along the road what is best for you. And sometimes we might wonder why God does not answer your prayer. James says it might be the purpose is wrong because God only wants what is best for us. Amen? Now, so... Do not be discouraged when God does not answer your prayer. He knows what is best for you. Your prayer might destroy you if He answers it. Amen. Now, He may withhold something that we request in order to protect us. But you see, without fail, God will always give us what we need. Okay? He may withhold things, he, but without fail, He will always give you what you need. Otherwise, this scripture is wrong. But it declares He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Okay? Now, the second is the scope of our provisions. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. What is the scope? For your life and for godliness. Everything you need in this life and for godliness. Now, you see, one great privilege of our relationship with the Father is that He has the power to provide us with every single thing that we need physically, materially, most of all, spiritually. He has provided us all these things for our life here on earth. And for our spiritual life. Now, tanawa ang mga promisa sa mga scripture. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. That is a promise. For everyone who asks will receive. He who seeks will find. And he who knocks, the door will be opened. 
if it comes to those things that we need in every aspect of our life, we can count on God to give us what we need. Remember, need and wants are different. Sometimes we don't distinguish them, but you see, God only gives us without fail what we need, not everything we want. Because sometimes our wants, we do not know we will de it will destroy us. We don't realize it now, but it might. But what we need, God is concerned about that. Okay? And without fail, He will provide that for you. Now, look at this again. The third one is the significance of God's promises. The scope, the significance of our provision. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Now, how do you know that God has given you everything? Look at this. Through our knowledge of Him, do you continue to seek the Lord and really know Him? Now, in the book of Philippians, Paul said, I don't know, more or less, Philippians was written by Paul when he met the Lord maybe 30, 35 years ago when he wrote Philippians. But he said in Philippians chapter 3, I want to know him. I want to be like him. And I will do for the rest of my life, what he has called me to do. After 35 years or more, Paul was still saying, I want to know him. Now, how long have you been a Christian? Do you continue seeking the Lord? Now, this might, I don't know, you might not agree with this, but I will say it anyway. A disciple is a learner. A disciple does not stop learning. God said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. A Christian who says, I am a disciple, then he does not stop learning. If you stop Studying the Word. Like, we have classes, you know. If you stop studying the Word, you stop seeking God. Now, let that sink in for a moment. If you stop studying the Word, you stop seeking God. How many of you are attending training classes? There is no graduation in discipleship. That is why Paul, after many years, still saying, I want to know God. If you're not interested in studying the word, think again. Look at yourself and be aware. Ask yourself. As Paul have said, always Always check yourself if you are still in the faith. Because it is easy for us, okay, to change our loyalties. Now, if you stop studying the word, you stop seeking God. Simple. And if you stop seeking God, you cease to be a disciple of God. Wow. No. Sometimes we think, ah, balun ako na, agin ako na. You know. But you see, when God sends a messenger, there is always something for you. The word will always speak to you, no matter how long you have been a Christian. 
You know, the Bible, we cannot exhaust this. Even though, tabi, doon pang tanang-tanga kabuhi, you will never exhaust this. The, re the treasure that is in here is unf unfathomable. That is why we have to think over our Christian life. Now, He has given us through the knowledge of Him, so the knowledge of Christ is very precious. It is something, it is not just religiosity. It is more than that. The knowledge of God must not be religious to you, just religiosity, but it must be a spiritual truth to you, to you, to your heart. I've said yesterday, the essence of the Christian life is transformation. The heart of the Christian life is transformation. Your becoming is more important than anything in your Christian life. Becoming to be like Christ. That is the purpose of all the trainings, the giftings, you know, all these things that we do for ministry. They are tools to lead us to the becoming inside like Christ. So knowing Him, I believe, is one of the most important things that we have to seek. I want to know Him. I want to be like Him. That was the spiritual goal of Paul in his life. Okay, now, So here, we can say, God has provide, provided us with everything that we need in order to live a holy life. As, as we journey to Christ's likeness, it is God did not just leave us for, with nothing, but he left us something, a power to live a holy life. He has given us this. The power is the Holy Spirit. But the desire must come from us. So the question is, I will give you today, I would challenge you is that, you see, in our, in our experience, when, the, when we, the church, you know, talk about when you preach about blessings, promises, you know, many would agree. But when you preach about righteousness and holiness, you know, people are not enjoying about it. Why? It requires a lot of things. But I will challenge you now with this question. Do you desire to live a holy life. Amen. So there are things you need to know. You see, being holy cannot be obtained. You cannot work for it. Because holiness only belongs to God. It says here, if we draw closer to God, he will draw closer to us. As, as, as we do, draw closer to God, He imparts His nature. He imparts holiness. You cannot work for holiness. God imparts it to you as you draw closer to Him. Okay? No one can say, I am holy. You know, it is being imparted to, to you by God. Now, the requirements, that's another thing. Knowing Jesus Christ is one thing. Okay, so question, do you desire to be holy life, to have, to be holy? Yes, 
Do you want to grow and mature spiritually? Yes. But we have to understand growing or maturing spiritually does not happen automatically. It is a desire you have to have. It is a decision. It is intentional. You have to decide to grow. You don't grow automatically. Okay? Now, no matter how much you attend Bible studies, services like this, but deep inside you, you are not seeking God, you don't want to grow, you don't want to be holy, nothing will happen. But if you decide, Lord, like Paul, I want to know you, then God reveals things to him that he needs to know. You must desire it. You must decide to grow in the Spirit. No matter how Pastor Edmund preached to you these things, unless you decide to grow. But when you decide, yes, Lord, the Spirit will give you even the urgency. The Spirit will give you the power. It has the decision in our Christian life must come from us. When we decide, yes, Lord, the power of the Spirit is always available. Now, so all this thing, desire to walk with Jesus daily, desire to be led by the Spirit in your life, desire to bring honor and glory to the Father, ministry. All of us, many of you are, are members of the ministry. We have to commit our lives to God. One way or the other, we have to serve the Lord. There is no life that is better than a life that is committed to service for God. Tutuod na yan, o isang kabuhi nga mas nami pa sa tanan, kundi kaservisyo sa ginoo. Amen. There are many ways to serve God. Tamo ministries. You know, you know what? Your everyday life, okay? Just practicing godly values in your association with other people is already worshiping God. Practice God with values every day. And people will say, Ay, nanon ni Shadow, lain ni Shadow. You know, and they will right away recognize, Ay, you know, he is with Jesus. Because our lives should be different from the lives of the world. We must make an impact in the lives of others. That should be our lives. Now, think about it again. Do you want to live a life that makes an impact in the lives of others? Remember, success is determined by relationship and relationship is determined by character. Okay. If there is a breakdown in character, there will be a breakdown in relationships. How true that is. Okay. We have come to a place where we can use what we have been given. So we have to realize God has given us everything. And we can use and claim and use a stool. There is no excuse. Okay, now the promise. The promise we have received through the through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises. And his promises, great and precious promises, speaks of the promises of abundant and eternal life. Jesus said, 
I have come to give you an abundant life. Tanawab lang ang promisa. But sometimes, Lord, the why man eh? Maybe you don't believe it. Okay. Now, I can, sh I can share to you testimonies after testimonies of the goodness of God. But, you know. Now, it is estimated there are 7,000 or more promises found in the Bible. And all these promises are great and precious. Why? Because a promise is only great because of the one who made the promise. It is only as good as the person who made it and who made the promise. God. Now, I can promise you something. But I, you know, please do not trust it 100%. I, something might come up and I will not be able to fulfill that promise. But when God promises something, it will come to pass. Amen. Do you trust him? Uh, isa lang. No? So, of course, uh, just isa lang gid ka illustration ni sa amon nga life ni Maribig. Isa lang. Hindi mo kukay mo sa ibang, you know, may illustration sa ibang nga tao. When we decided to go to Cadiz, I did not know what will happen. Totoo na. But the promise of God, I trust you the promise of God. Because I believe when God sends you anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world, maski sa babaw sa bukid, God, if you trust Him, He will supply all your needs. I believe that. Nag-resign sa Marivik, my wife, katutos kadis. I am sure God has called me there. Ano ang abta namon? I do not know. At that time, after 20 years, now I see the reality of it. God has provided everything we need and it changed our life for the better. Wow. The first few years, it was hard, yes. But I never complained. Never grumbled. I just continued to minister. And gradually, you know, as I continue to trust God, I can see the changes every day. Even in the lives of the people there. Up to this day. The promise of God never fails. Amen. So there are... 7,000 promises in Scripture. Okay. Now, look at what Paul said. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was, he was able also to perform. That is why Paul Never grumbled and complained in the trials in obeying God. When you obey God, oh, expect trials and sufferings. Paul, when he committed his life to Jesus, he gave his life to Jesus. No matter what happens, he continued, never explained the perils that he would face why is it got trust? Okay. But because uh, in your heart and mind, I will fulfill the calling of God in my life to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Krabi ang, now, sa scripture, uh, three missionary journeys. But in history, books, apat gali, my fourth missionary journeys before he was in prison in Rome. 
But you see, after that, Paul, why he didn't climb until he had Timothy. I, I don't know, maybe this week, today, maybe tomorrow, or the next day, Nero will just cut off my head. I do not know. But what I tell you, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. And there is a crown waiting for me. Pagbasa ko niya una, wow, how can you say such a thing? If, you know, if you are not that close to God, can you say there is a crown waiting for me? How many of us can say that? No matter how much we spend our life in serving God. Though, you know, don't you come back in high. Are you sure of yourself? But Paul, yeah, Timothy, I've been poured out like a drink. But there is, you know, nanong bilin niya kay Timothy, continue to do your ministry. You see, when you commit your life to a ministry, die for that ministry. Die for that ministry. Do not give up. Because it is God who called you to that ministry. And Paul died in that calling of God in his life. And at the end he says, there is a crown waiting for me. Wow. You know, sometimes when I say this, there is a crown waiting for me. But of course we can say, I will fight the good fight of faith. I will finish the race. Brethren, no matter what happens, do not turn your back on God. There is no other. There is no other that can help us and bring salvation to us. There is no other than Jesus Christ. Amen. Always go back to God. Engage God daily, no matter what. Maybe you don't feel it. You're tired of it. Maski makamang ka na. Engage God daily. So, we can trust that the promises of God will never fail. All these things, He has promised to return. He has promised that He has prepared a home for us when He takes us home with Him. That's why when we, you know, uh, when we bury someone, when a loved one dies and he is a Christian, we just cry, of course, we have emotion, we have, but the loss is temporary. We know that the loss is just temporary. We will see them again. So be sure, your loved ones, now, like your children, the greatest legacy that you can leave your children is training them for eternity. Why not so much Okay? We have to prepare them where they are going. And the next one is uh, the protection we have received. So that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Because of our relationship to him, God has provided us with great provisions and promises as well as great protection. Do you believe God protects you? I, I believe one, one time or another, you have felt that protection in real time. Hindi lang ka istorya, kundi nabatsyagan mo git. And you have been reminded, this is God. How many times, you know, siguro, basi maksidente na ka mo, and somehow something happened that cannot be explained. 
I, I believe you have, you know, you have experienced that. In our lives, many, many, many times. Really. One time, gabiyahe pa ko pa kadis, gapuli ko kong gabi, and it was raining so hard, hindi ko makita ang visibility sa doon kalipot lang. Siguro one meter. Grabing ulan. So, good luck ko, gabi. Some gulpi lang, may impresyon. Pundo, pundo. You know, so, but the train ko lang was ko, when something happens like that, no, pundo ko na yun, because I believe it is the Holy Spirit. I believe I am protected by God. You know what? Pag siling pundo, pundo ko na yun, kaya may sugata mo, hindi ko kita, kay grabing ulan. You know what? Pag lampas ang sugata, kabalok ako na nakita ko, ara na ko sa likod sa truck. Siguro one meter ni Pinsa. Wow! Lord, I can't believe it. But thank you, Lord. Grabe. Damo, katabo mga muna ng sistema. So be sensitive to the Spirit. Okay? When you're sensitive to the Spirit, you will be sensitive to His voice. Okay. And He has promised protection for all of us. And I believe all of us have experienced that protection one way or the other. Amen. Now, even in our relationship, one time, uh, may punta sa, sa, sa Dumagete. Bag ula ni sa Kristiyano. Pero grabe nga uh, kwantos. Nakibot ko to. Bag ula ni sa Kristiyano. Okay, anyway, one time, gin-impress sa akon. Uh, tawagin siya. You know? So, tinawagin ko siya. May kumusta ka na? Ah, ya pastor, okay lang. Okay lang ko. Ya maya ka na nawag ka sa akin. Why, is, why ako anay kin sugidan? So, usually, uh, I travel to Dumagete every three months to, to, you know, just check on the churches when I was still at overseer. Pag-abot ko to, siya na permin ka, ka kumirate sa man. Okay? Uh, upo na kami permin ni Maripit. Sige nga, pastor, why kakbalo? During that night, nga nga natawag sa akon grabe itong akon kwan nga nag you know kami sa asawa ko nag something you know I was holding the gun pamatsun ko na kabataan ko kag ako nawas when you call wow no, I didn't realize that but you see you know it changed his mind pagtaw- yeah, pagtawag mo pastor sa akon sa mga doon na 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 nakabugtaw ko. Yeah, thank God. You know, sometimes impressions like that you know, could save a life. Really. So kagapon nalipat ko magamba sa inyo sa mga couples. We argue, isn't it? But ano nga ba ni James? Do not let your uh, do not the, let the sun go down on your anger. I hope, you know, why ito naglambot sa, pwede ka mo karyo, no? Hindi lang pagpalapawa ang maglabanay ka mo. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, but even, magtalik na nai na lang sa pagtulog sa gabi. Because do not let the sun go down on your anger. Ariglahan nyo na yun. Praise the Lord. Ama ng protection sa Diyos eh. Mga protection sa ito. Now, the last part is that he protects us from corruption. And uh, corruption speaks of something decomposing or decaying. Anong corruption sa kalibutan? Bukadamo. You know? Corruption of our godly values. Siling ko, practice godly values every day of their life. Let it be a lifestyle. Living godly values. You know what? You will be worshiping God when people see your godly values. Especially in the workplace. Ara ka mo sa opisina, lain yang inyo, you know, ang panggiho mo yan, values mo lain, you don't compromise, it, you know. You, you, do, you do things the right way. May conviction ka eh. Hindi mag dishonest. So be honest at all times, be truthful at all times. 
Okay, isa ka korupsyon lang kay do basic ko money. Gossip. That is one corruption of the world. Do not indulge in gossip. It will destroy you. Okay? Simple na kasi ay kana kabalog duga kana sa story ay. Slander. Bringing down other people to destroy. Even if it is true, a slander is a lie, but even if it is true, but the purpose, the intention is still to destroy, it is still a slander. So, in this way, I'm going to go to the house. Hapos, madalas sa kutso-kutso. Kasubo, kung maguba. Kaya man, hambal ni, po, ni James yan, ang dila datang can light a fire, can destroy a forest. Don't use your tongue in gossip. Because the same tongue, the same mouth, you use it to worship God. Tunutuduhan na lang. Use your mouth and your tongue for God not for the corruption of the world. Amen. Okay, now as we end this, the last, the last line that I will give you, dalan siya puli, and think about it. Okay? There is no reason we cannot live a holy life because God has given us everything we need to live a holy life. Now the question is, do you desire to live a holy life? That is up to you. Then get closer to God. Because you cannot obtain it. God's nature, He will share it to you as you get closer to Him. Amen. God bless you.